Hey everyone, um, today we're going to talk to you guys a little bit about Bright Farms and how it uh, positively impacts today's uh, agriculture economy. I'm Daniel. I'm James Brown. And I'm Gil Snyder. So with past research, we've decided that we agree with Bright Farms and how it has major impacts in today's economy and compared to the traditional agricultural waste. Here's a look at a traditional supply chain here. As you can see, it is very long. Um, starts out with growing at the farm. From there, they load it onto a truck, which then takes it to a train station where a bunch of crops and everything gets loaded on there and then gets driven cross country. From there, the uh, train station unloads it by uh, state and counties to get it to the uh, designated location. And from there, those trucks then take it to the final grocery market. All in all, you're looking at a five to 12 day um, travel time, depending on weather and climates. Now we can take a look at the Bright Farm supply chain. As you can tell, it's a lot shorter. Um, here they grow it locally, so there's less travel time. From there, they'll load it onto the truck, and the truck drives maybe 24 hours max and unloaded at the grocery store. So it's really big with just-in-time production and it gets it to the grocers quickly as possible. We're gonna take a look at a couple of the uh, differences in operational processes. So uh, with the traditional one, you're looking at trains and trucks, cross country uh, with weather, rails freeze up, roads are iced over, it can add a lot of uh, travel time, lead time. Um, whereas if you're local, the trucks don't only have to drive right down maybe a couple cities, maybe in the next state. Real, real short, 24 hours. Um, buying based on projection, so when you're doing traditional, you gotta, you gotta forecast. So we never know when seasonal is helpful sometimes, but they're always projecting, always running forecasts, trying to get the right amount, which causes overages or uh, under shortages, sorry. Um, just in time delivery, uh, real easy, so real process. Uh, grocers will call in, they need something quick. We can have it there 24 hours, next day delivery. Uh, good, good for the grocers. Pesticides versus no, no pesticides. Uh, Non-GMO is a big thing right now in today's economy, so being labeled as a non-GMO product really helps it sell in the markets, whereas pesticides are being used for traditional products because they have to go cross country, but yet still stay fresh while they're traveling five to 12 days, which affects the taste and nutri nutritional value. Farmers who know how to work the mills and everything, uh, so they're out there working hard in the fields, uh, 12 hour days sometimes, depending on the uh, production, whereas our guys are working in a warehouse, uh, it's climate controlled, pretty easy, uh, pretty easy conditions, so that's good for our, our people working for us. Um, tilling the earth and harvesting the crops, so you gotta use heavy machinery, uh, you gotta fuel those machines, which is also an additional cost. Uh, machine breakdowns can affect production. So you're looking at a lot, of, a lot of possibility for air there. Whereas with us, you just got a hydroponic system. Uh, as long as that's maintained and kept up with, it really runs itself. Not a lot of, not a lot of ma maintenance going on there. Now I'm gonna pass it to uh, Gil, and he's gonna talk to you guys a little bit about the advantages and disadvantages. Okay, so for the key strategic competitive advantages of the Bright Farm system, uh, the very first one's going to be the one that we've touched on several times already, and that's eliminating or reducing the heavy shipping costs and the lead time. That's going to be the biggest cut off of your costs uh, right off the bat. The other thing that's really big is what we're trying to provide our consumers with, the end customer, is the nutritional value. Also, the taste of your produce that's not genetically modified. So when it's not modified in order to survive these long shipping and lead times, uh, it actually tastes better. Um, and then also we're going to be stimulating the local agricultural economy because whenever we build one of our Bright Farms crop production facilities, we're going to be hiring and training farmers from the local market to come in and work for us and they're going to be paid great wages and nice conditions, healthy conditions. And then um, another big advantage is the growth, the growth year round, we're not going to be as affected as uh, some of the parts, other parts of the country will be by the changing climate and the effect that it has on the crop and how much of the crop goes to waste. We can control all of that within our crop production facilities. And then um, whenever we're talking about the locations and facilities, 
there's some considerations. So the first thing that we want to note is that most profitable areas is going to be in the northeastern area of the United States. And as we go further to the south of the west, that's where most of the farms are going to be because that's where the nicer weather is. And so we're going to have more competition there. So it's going to be a little bit harder for um, bright farms to set up in those areas and stay profitable and competitive with the local farmers that are already established there. And whenever it comes to the actual facility, uh, whenever, when we look at expanding, we have to think about whether or not can the production uh, continue to be to get larger and then also have continued quality. Can we continue to provide products that we want our customers to enjoy while growing at a rate that we think um, is uh, respectable for our company? And then we need to look at the demand for new types of lettuce and the change of the capacity in the facility. So there's a lot of flexibility within our facility to put in new types of lettuce to meet the current market which is a positive consideration. So being aware that we can actually change things at a pretty quick rate to accommodate our consumers is a really positive additional consideration for us. Um, forecasting inventory and management. So if you look at the traditional side of things, you've got higher inventory on hand, so you're gonna end up with some, some waste. And then you have to think about the seasonal effects of the climate. And it's harder to attain accurate information when you're doing your forecast for um, how much lettuce is actually going to make it to the to the end consumer without being damaged, or how much of it is even going to make it off the farm? And then if you look at bright farms, you just look at I mean it's pretty straightforward. It's you know less attention because of the technology and because of the system that we're using, and the information as a result of those things is highly accurate, making it uh, our inventory very precise. So we know what we're going to have and when we're going to have it and how much we can supply to our consumers. So in summary, there's some benefit. The major benefits is going to be the cut on the shipping costs, the fast reaction to our customer orders, and the end product that we're supplying to our customers with that increase in nutrition and the better taste. And we're also going to be stimulating the local economy. And the disadvantages is going to be just our initial setup. It's going to be the initial cost on the warehouse with the lights and the system and the technology and everything that we have to buy and put into the place because Bright Farms assumes that original cost uh, for, the, for all of the supplies going into the, into the facility. And the other thing is, uh, because there is so much going into the original uh, cost of, of the Bright Farms facility, there's gonna be a higher price on the end product, but it's not too much of a high price, and uh, that takes me right into James, who's gonna talk about the financial side, and he's gonna break all, all of that down for you guys. The traditional cost, the supply chain costs about $2.21 from Fresno Farm to Buck County, Pennsylvania. That's about 2,883 miles. Uh, a reefer truck can hold at mass capacity approximately 46,536 heads of lettuce, which brings our uh, head of, uh, cost per head of lettuce to approximately 19 cents. Our average cost to purchase at the farm from Fresno is 61 cents. This brings our cost per head of lettuce to bring the market to be 80 cents. The Bright Farms cost uh, per head of lettuce is going to consume two different or primary segments. The first is going to be the lease and building costs. That's going to come up to 55 cents per head of lettuce. And the harvest and heating cost, which is going to come up to be 22 and a half cents and 23 and a half cents, bringing us a total cost per head of lettuce, so about a dollar. You have to consider the price to purchase a head of lettuce in, uh, in New York, which is a, on a yearly average is gonna be a dollar 59. This price is very stable and really depends upon the demand, so it does not fluctuate much. It's very um, fixed versus the, the 80 cents for the Fresno to market is very volatile. It depends upon climate change, um, how much a head competitors are costing, how much the farms choose to produce that year, other farms. So this can fluctuate anywhere from 30 cents to $1.60. Whereas the Bright Farms costs, they're very fixed, they're very controllable. That dollar is gonna be the same dollar 
year after year. And speaking about year after year, going forward and looking at a three to five uh, projection, uh, three to five year projection on the growth of Bright Farms, there's some things that we know that we're going to run into, some challenges that we're going to run into. And we talked about it a little bit earlier about finding the experienced talent that we're going to need in order to work in the new facilities or the, when we expand the facilities. And they came up with some ideas about the Bright Farms University in order to train people properly. So they can use, number two, they can use those technological advancements that we're adding on, like sensors throughout the farm and keep up with those kind of things. Uh, because you can't just pull a traditional farmer out of the farm and put them inside of the Bright Farms facility because there's way too much technology going on. So there needs to be some substantial training. And we need the technology in order to be profitable and continue to have larger and larger margins and stay in the race with the traditional ag agriculture system. And then also being considerate of the costs associated with lighting and heating, those are only going to go up and we need to be pro, you know, proactive about our relationships with the electricity companies to keep those costs down. Uh, that's all we have for you guys today. We appreciate you watching and uh, we're going to open everything up for questions. Thank you.